and welcome to a wonderful Well-Being Wednesday show. I am joined today, I have the privilege of being joined today by my very dear friend, Barbara French, who is a, a theater uh, educator and a very creative person. And so we were going to talk about how the creative process helps aid well-being. So thank you so much, Barbara, for joining me today. And let's talk about creativity. Do you want to start by giving us a little background on all the different things that you've done and taught? And <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't want to do all that. <laughs> but thank you for having me, Karen. It's a real pleasure to be here. And, and I'm super, super happy that you're doing this series. I think it's an awesome idea. Um, so I really love it. Thank you for doing that. So yeah, me. Um, so I'm a theater artist by trade. I think I was first time I stepped on a stage, I was eight. So it's been going on a long time. I'm a little older than eight now. <laughs> um, I've been uh, basically doing theater for a long time. And I was in the university academic bubble for about 17 years. So some of that time was spent getting an honors degree and a master's. And some of that time was good 10 years was spent teaching at the university level. And in addition to just being a theater artist, I've had my own companies. I've looked at lots of acting, directing, all kinds of stuff. When I was in the, the in the, sorry, the university teaching, one of the courses that I taught in addition to teaching acting and all that fun stuff was a course called Exploring Creativity. And I think I taught it 15 times so quite a bit um and it wasn't you couldn't take it well you could take it if you were a theater major but you didn't get any credit for it so nobody took it if they were <laughs> a drama major so what I ended up with which is the fascinating and, and so rewarding part of it was students from business management students from the sciences all the sciences from history from biblical studies, from kinesiology, from just about every faculty you can imagine. But a lot of them were business and science and education students. And we don't typically think of those people as doing theater, doing drama. And they didn't really think of themselves that way, which was um, sort of a little eye-opening to me because I'd spent so much time with a bunch of artists. You know, <laughs> yeah. we all kind of knew we were creative weirdos. Um, these people often, especially the men, for some reason, would come in thinking they really weren't very creative at all. And um, I, well, probably most of the people that graduate with a degree from college get business major and stuff. So we're talking about the majority of the population, basically, thinking I'm not creative. And so <laughs> can that be taught creativity? I don't think it, well, there's two, I have two ways of looking at that. Yes and no. And <laughs> yes, because I did teach it. <laughs> but what I was teaching essentially was having people use the creativity they have. So the the the, the no in my answer is, is sort of more like a NA, like not applicable, not needed. Wrong everybody, question. Yeah, everybody <laughs> has this in them to some degree and usually to a much bigger degree. And the reason that I can say that is, is science-y, actually, because when you start looking at the brain, now back when I was teaching this, which is like the mid, um, to, like 2006 to 2009, I think, ish, um, the theory on the, on the right and left brain stuff that we've all heard is the left brain is, uh, is your logic mm -hmm. and the right brain is your creativity. Yes, so the left brain handled language, and the right brain handled I don't know, painting or music or emotions and stuff like that. But in reality, when we say that the left brain handles handles language, that's not quite true, because it handles the rules of language, it handles syntax, it handles grammar. The right side of the brain handles language too. It just does it, it from a different perspective. It looks at all the different ways that we communicate that don't involve the actual words because communication is hugely based on not the actual words but the looking at people and looking at their gestures and how they're where they're putting their eyes and 
whether we believe them or not and our intuition on uh, on what they're what they're actually feeling and the slang and the you know, all the stuff that we do and the right brain is heavily involved in that so when we look at the two left brain and right brain we can see that they're completely integrated in in many many ways there's a lot of crosstalk going on between the left and the right hemisphere so I know that everybody is creative because they have to be in order to just talk, for example, <laughs> right? Right. So there's that whole aspect of it. Um, and then the ways that I would teach creativity is I would just simply show people, I would put them in the places where they had to, I, mean, I was going to say where they were forced to, but if you want to get a good grade, um, that where they were, they were put in a position where they had to find different ways of communicating or different ways of problem solving. And these are the things that we do all long, all day long. We, we do it all the time. We just don't recognize that that's actually a creative thing, but we're constantly doing it. So, so the, the, the right question then would be, is everyone creative and they just don't know it? <laughs> I think most, yeah, I think that's true. I think it's yeah. true. I think if if there if you were I don't know I guess there's maybe some people who've had brain injuries that specifically have damaged something where maybe they're not able to access parts of their brain, but they've done. Um, there were children have had uh, uh, seizures, little kids who have had seizures, and they have done this hundreds of times where they've literally re removed half of their brain in order to stop the seizures, and what happens is that other half just takes over and it carries on and it gives them all the the memory and the cognition ability and the creativity and socialization and all that stuff just develops normally so they end up the having the same is, function yeah they lose their vision in the in that opposite eye from their brain and i think they have some motor skill issues as well but on that opposite side but other than that their brain carries right on so just so, the synapses just kind of rewire or something. Wow, that's fascinating. I know there was a study on <clears throat> children and creativity and they did, it was, I want to say it was like a NASA study or something where they hmm. showed like these engineer, they wanted to see how creative engineers were. And then they started giving the test to children and they found out like children before school and in the first years of school were like scoring off the chart as creative geniuses and then they could see a pattern of through mm. school how that was like kind of dumbed down or taken away or they're losing that resource it's just maybe like a muscle that they're not using or something I think that's wow. really all it is is we're is we're teaching them to not to not be creative and instead as we know when you go into school here are the things that I want you to pair it back to me to get your grade that doesn't involve creativity Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If it's just copying and parroting that's um not what happens unless they're in your class <laughs> no they're oh my gosh the crazy I mean I've had I had um <laughs> I had the emergency people come emergency medical people show up at my class my class was very famous for being completely disruptive like in the university setting like absolutely completely disruptive and it, it had a waiting list every single term so you were disruptive before disrupting was cool. <laughs> oh my God. It was, yeah, it was, I know I was a problem, but the kids loved, loved the course. And oh my God, I've never, I've never felt so rewarded. Like I literally would have, I'll just tell a little story sort of on the side. So the, uh, I did it in a variety of classes, but the most of the time I did it in a dance studio down in the bottom floors in the bowel of the, of the university. And uh, it was a big room, but on the side of the room, because it was long, sort of, imagine a dance studio with mirrors all the way alongside in a very long room. And on the side, there was a big wooden box. It was a big thing that was built to hold the sound system for the dancers. And it would sit in the middle of the room. So my students would come and they'd sit on the floor at one end and I would sort of stand 10 feet away facing them and do a little talky lecture -y thing and then we'd get to work. And the first day I remember, so there's 39 students sitting on the floor in front of me. And this one girl walked behind me and hid behind the cabinet. That was her first day. 
by the end of the class, she was just doing whatever you could just mm -hmm. imagine. She was running around and she was a cat or she was like, you know, quoting Shakespeare in gibberish or she was, you know, standing on her head or she, it just, she had completely and utterly blossomed. And I saw that time after time, after time, after time, because they were allowed to. I didn't tell them what to think. What I did was I gave them limits, really pretty strict limits. And then they had absolute freedom in between those walls. That's the best way to get, for artists to get something that is, that, that they can break through. You know what I mean? Like they have to, they have to find different ways of doing things because there are these limits here. And uh, like, for example, I would, they had to produce these pieces and I wouldn't allow them to speak. So they had to tell their stories without any words, like for three quarters of the entire class. So of the term. So the first three or four projects, they were not allowed to use words, <laughs> but they had to tell stories. They found all kinds of creative ways of doing that. But that was like, you know, here's your limits, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it was just uh, it, it was just a mind blowing how well these kids would grab onto this stuff and they would just blossom because they were allowed to do it. Yeah, it was fascinating. And, and I think left brained or more left brain oriented people like rules and like because it mm -hmm. feels like structure. So even mm -hmm. though you're taking away the thing that they use that as their main. Yeah, that's cool. Um, we're, we're talking about well-being on this show. So can you kind of help me understand how creativity affects well-being or how it relates to well-being and. Well, it's interesting because they've done they've done a lot of studies about this, actually. And if you look around and start digging, you can usually find that it increases things like, um, well, we've all seen the video or probably we have the videos where somebody's gone into an, uh, a senior's residence where someone has uh, crippling Alzheimer's and they've gone in and played like a World War One ditty. That's such a horrible juxtaposition, right? War and ditty. Um, and, and that person just comes alive. Like they just suddenly, they're remembering things again. And it's simply because it, it stimulates our cognitive ability and our memories. Um, it's, they found it's helped people who are dealing with trauma. They found it helps people who are struggling with depression and helps them come out of it. They've even found that it helps with physical immunity against diseases and viruses. So there's a whole range of stuff when you start using creative approaches, and that could simply be music or dancing or painting. Um, it just seems to it just seems to heal the brain, and now we know even potentially help to heal the body. So it's really fascinating. People just light up, and they they. <sighs> They get into a whole different state sometimes like creativity can actually take you to a completely different place there's an expert in creativity who's i think he's hungarian his name is mihai csikszentmihalyi and the only reason that i can say that because his name is just a long string of vowels is because i remember his first name and the end of his last name were the same so it was mihai Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it was chick sent me hi. So I always remember this <laughs> idea of this guy, you know, having a great time on a date or something. But so me hi, chick sent me hi. Uh -huh. And he um, he talked about and wrote a book on on flow. And what he said, he said was when artists or anybody, this could be you organizing your closet. This could be you doing a, re you know, a new recipe. It could be an accountant finding a way around an accounting problem. It could be somebody launching a business. Like it, it, it's just anything that people are doing, whether or not they think that it's actually creative. You can get into this place of flow where time completely disappears and you don't even feel like you're part of the world anymore. You don't mm -hmm. even feel some people actually feel like they're leaving their body, like they're not physically connected. If they're a painter, they'll they'll uh, this is their body. This is about all they have is this this connection between the hand and the brush and the canvas, you know, and it's just this amazing place. And it's yeah. a it's a it's like a, it's like being on another level of existence. So when you talk about well-being, not only is it good for your brain and your memory and and uh, 
And I would say, I would add socialization because apparently another study was done by a, by James. Oh, I can't remember his name right now. Alf, Alcher. Oh, I can't get it. And he was looking at um, whether or not they, he was studying people who were doing creative acts of all different kinds and whether they were better off doing them alone or with other people. And sometimes people had way better connections with each other and enjoyed the activity much more if they were doing it together and collaboratively. So the socialization aspect is, is off the scale too. So there's just so many ways that it's good for your well-being and can actually send you into a different dimension, as it were, if you're if you're really in that flow where time disappears and you just don't even feel like you're a physical being at that point. So well, it, it makes sense to me because I'm kind of one of the, you know, born created, like not, I never had that like block to what well, I would say, how do I say this? A, a, any sense that I wasn't creative person. However, there are times when I felt blocked from creativity and from the flow to me feels like passion. It feels like the, the essence of life and life loses meaning for me if I don't get mm enough of that but also if I have those moments of blockage oh man it just can put me in a rut and just make me feel so depressed and you know like I just feel a lot of terrible things <laughs> and then I and then and then my habits start falling apart and everything kind of just starts <laughs> to bleh, you know when I yeah. don't have creativity and so then I'm taking care of myself not as good <laughs> It's true. Like that, that's a big part of it too, right? You're absolutely right. Um, it's interesting. You talked about frustration. I'm going to talk about that when we talk later, when we talk about what the steps of the process are, because if you can, if you can understand what the basic steps and how creativity mm -hmm. works, then you're much, um, much more likely to not get freaked out when you're frustrated and actually be able to sort of grab onto it and encourage it. But I wanted to say we um, the other thing about wellness is we all we all know this example where you can think of some famous mathematician or scientist who's also plays the violin or is a painter. Right. We've all heard about that. It's just this idea of balance, this idea where the, here's these people who are incredibly there's two different kinds of thinking. Well, some people say there's three different kinds. There's all different ways of categorizing this, but there's lateral and linear thinking, basically. So linear thinking is logical thinking, one plus two equals three, you know, A equals B equals C, therefore A equals C kind of thing. And then there's lateral thinking, which is a term that Edward de Bono came up with, and he's a longtime creativity expert. Um, and it's basically a, just, a, it's it's the creative process. It's, it's brainstorming. It's where linear thinking is one, two, three, step by step, or you can do linear thinking where you have a whole bunch, if you've imagined just a whole bunch of um, facts coming together to a single point to a conclusion, mm -hmm. lateral thinking is sort of the opposite. You have a question or a problem and you sort of explode your brain so that there's, oh yeah, there's that story and there's that factoid and there's this um, incidence of whatever and there's that rumor and there's this little thing I remember happening when I was two and you just like exploding it all over the place to try to get the answer to the question. So I sort of think of it as in that, with that kind of a diagram as logical thinking going this way from, or sorry, this way from the evidence to the problem. And lateral thinking going the other way it was like I have a question and it's like this sort of starburst that comes out of it you know and I think that's what helps those kinds of thinkers balance their lives out yeah that the, makes you, sense you mentioned like people in different like modalities and how they kind of play into each other like the music and the this uh, and it reminded me of a few years back a plumber like came into the medical field and came up with a heart valve that no one had thought of before. Right. And it was like a solution from outside of this field. And the field had been working for something for a long time, but it, it took a plumbing expert <laughs> <laughs> like to, to figure it. it out, you know, 
to 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 feel like this field of study applies to this field of study and for the longest time the industry couldn't accept it because it was coming from a plumber <clears throat> god it's so stupid Which is so fascinating that it's just kind of like this is where we are this is where you, and it's like the reason you didn't come up with it was because you're so stuck in this like one way to do things instead of like like you said looking outside what does this story relate to this or yeah it's fascinating so well, fascinating. It is. and sometimes we don't even know like we don't understand how those two things work together and we don't even know sometimes uh, is this creative thought or is it logical thought you know it's all I mean problem solving is creativity period it just it just is and I remember this is a dumb little example but when I lived in Mexico, we we all have walls around the houses. They're always there. And then there'll be a gate that you walk through, which is usually just bars of some kind. And there, of course, when you go to uh, open your gate, there's a lock on the inside and a lock on the outside. And I know that the house that I was in, the lock on, on the outside going in, would 50% of the time you put your key in and it's not coming out, ever. Not coming out, doesn't matter what you do. It's like done. So the first time I did it, I was like, just... I was flummoxed. I'm like, well, what? I'm still, I can't leave this because then people could, what? So I thought suddenly, I don't know where I came from, but I took my key, house key off the ring, went into the house, got my second key for the gate because I had a backup, came back outside, shoved it on the inside, and then the outside lock, the key just popped right <laughs> out. And I'm like, well, what, how would that logically be? Like, a, that's not a logical thought to me, or is it? Or is it a creative thought? No idea what kind of a what led me to that conclusion I don't even know what kind of thinking I was using you know it's just it's try so it hard. sometimes sometimes it's <laughs> just try it <laughs> sometimes, sometimes yeah but they definitely I know the two things work together and they balance each other out so yeah cool yeah so that is really helpful with with that like problem solving it does take some some amount of creative thinking and I mean I would imagine almost all yeah I'm trying to think of a problem where I wouldn't use creative thinking to solve it <laughs> I don't know maybe a, a direct yeah. math problem or something yeah. or, like I mean I suppose there are things but um I find they often work together mm -hmm. um now uh we talked about flow and the volume of flow um we're talking oh you you brought up okay you brought up the creative process and how mm -hmm. there are actual steps to the creative product can we get into that now or is absolutely okay it's perfect timing let's for like it, figure out like because like I said I even I get stuck sometimes so I mean obviously this is even for people that don't think of themselves as creative but what are those steps to that like when I get myself in a situation where I feel not creative <laughs> or, I, or I'm not getting that like connect I feel like it's like a connection to something bigger than myself that's like tapping into like the world wide web of creativity or something uh, I feel the same way yeah yeah I totally do it's almost like the answer is already out there you just have to allow it in sometimes you know rather than me fighting to be creative it's like well the, it's already there it just have to let it in and that's part of the process too. So if you were to go probably on the internet, you would probably see things like there's three steps to the creative process. There's nine steps to the creative process. There's 17. You know, it's just kind of crazy. I sort of have it. I don't know who I took this from or where I got it or if I came up by myself, but there's like five or six, six steps to me that are clearly delineated and yet sometimes you'll get up you'll get to the point where you have to repeat step like three or four like over and over and over again so there's the first step is just preparation so if you've got whatever it is like you could be like I'm writing a play right now or you could be solving a math problem or you could be <clears throat> I don't know organizing something in your home or whatever you're doing you're going to have to get some sort of prep work involved so generally that's either doing a bunch of research so that you understand the problem. It's uh, maybe it's making a list or outlining your goals and what you actually want to accomplish. Maybe it's um, looking back through history, other people who have done this, whatever it is, or getting your tools together. Maybe you're a mechanic 
and you're working on a vintage car in your garage and you've run into something that's really problematic and you can't get the part it just doesn't exist so what are you going to do make one so it's you know <laughs> right? so he might need some specific tools and specific parts so it's gathering all the things all the resources that you need and understanding what you where, what your goal is and that's just the whole preparation phase and what that does is it just get your brain ready. It, it's, it tells your brain, okay, this is what we're doing. You got we're going to have to figure this out. So here's all your stuff. And then you go into what's what I like to call, like, it's just, it's the working phase, like the concentrated work or concentrated effort, I guess, um, where you get, you, now your hands are in there and you start to go at it and you're, you're trying to, whatever it is, whatever you're doing, you're organizing, you're planning, you're writing, you're painting, whatever you're doing. And you start your concentrated effort and then bam, you run into a roadblock, which is kind of what you were talking about. Um, and it's extremely frustrating. And frustration is the next step of the creative process. It's almost always happens. There's <laughs> been a few times in my life where it flowed, but it's it's just part of the process. So you've got preparation, you've got concentrated effort, and then you hit frustration. And that is your opportunity because really I used to tell my students <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah I used to tell my students e either you're going to have an epiphany or if you don't you have to punch through to gold like it's on the other side of the wall and you're gonna have to punch through which means you better come up with some really cool ideas in order to do that but it doesn't have to be that violent <laughs> so after frustration this is where you know we all know what it feels like I just I don't know what to do I can't come up with another idea I feel like I have writer's block or this part is never going to work or there's no way to solve this problem. Um, my husband, who is a musician, but also has been working in like home renovation for like 40 years. He describes it as he'll stand back and say, because he hits problems all the time, like ridiculous problems. Like you're working, you're trying to put something new on something that's 60 years old and this 60 year old thing is not square and it's rotting in the corner and blah 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 so he'll be how is there another way of doing this and for him a picture will jump right into his mind that's just the way he that's how he works but it's that is there another way of doing this is that sort of stepping back and then you hit a, a period called incubation so after frustration is incubation and incubation is literally sleeping on it or going to take a walk or going to take a drive or whatever it is that you do that will get you away from your problem and you're literally telling your brain to go figure it out because okay. you put all this energy in and you're frustrated and you're working hard at it and then it's like okay go figure it out brain and often when you come back there will be some sort of a magical idea I think everybody experiences this when they do jigsaw puzzles because you sit down <laughs> and you're like, can't find the flipping piece. You're looking for it. It's just, ah, where is it? And then you get up and you walk away and you go cook something or you make yourself a little snack and then you come back and it's like right there. And you're like, how did I not see it? Right. <laughs> and people can come up with the most creative things. And I mean, the way the way that we need to look at this is you need to flip something on its head or turn it inside out or pull it apart like this is when this happens is right in this frustration incubation phase is you have to get really creative and then just put the whole thing away and then you'll come back and suddenly you go oh my god if I if I flip this on its head perfect example of this I don't know if you guys know um out there <laughs> Alex Hermosi he's yeah. he's a an internet entrepreneur guy he's amazing like he's he's like rags to riches guy and um he was he came up I think through the gyms like he's a he's a bodybuilder guy okay. and so he wanted to sell his boot camp like his online boot camp challenge thing everybody's doing it right so what everybody's doing is the same thing they're like hey here's a six-week boot camp it's like 99 bucks and um, there's a limited warranty on it. And then, of course, when you finish the camp, they want to upsell you to the big package, right? Right, right. So he instead, they came up with this thing that was like, okay, it's a six-week boot camp. It's $600, but we're going to give you all this other stuff, all, all these menus and all this, this and that. And, and here's the kicker, 
we guarantee that you're going to lose 20 pounds. But it's not a, if you don't lose 20 pounds, we'll give you your money back. If you do lose 20 pounds, we'll give you your money back. Wait, That's what, what they did. <laughs> That's what they did. And you know what happened? They sold so many of those packages at the end that they literally went from making a, because a, a, so, the other model, you made half of your money back. These guys made 13% more. <laughs> like they 13 x their investment yeah that's crazy but, right so that's like flipping the whole marketing idea on its head yeah. in order to get to a result so people lose the 20 pounds they're like hey i want my money back this worked like a damn i want your next program yeah in fact you know what i don't even want my money back it was so worth it to me just give me your next program and so they they just flipped it on its head because yeah. they were because they were frustrated with the saturated market too many people doing the same thing. And how do you get in there? Right. Totally creative. I don't know what their incubation process was like, but when they came back to the drawing board, which isn't the next process, which is either called or the next step, which is either you can call it translation, you can call it incorporation. It's just basically taking the idea and putting it to work that you've got. You might have to repeat the frustration incubation phase a few times because we keep hitting walls. But that's basically the process. The, the incubation part, I think, has been for me, it, like what we were talking about when I get frustrated and stuff is like I, a part of me is, is wired to like, I'm just going to kick it into, to death until it comes to me, you know? And so <laughs> I don't incubate and I don't walk away. Or even when I try to lay down, I'm still trying to figure it out or come up with an idea or tap into uh, and I'm just, I'm so like, I've got to make it happen that I'm not allowing it to happen. So that's probably like, I'm not, I'm not taking my mind off of it ever until I figure it out. And so that's probably why I'm get into my spins of frustration because eventually you just get so mad. You walk away and you're like, I give up on this entirely. I'm never going to do this again. <laughs> and that's when the idea is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say that the, this is obviously not set in stone either. This is just something that I and other people who have studied this have sort of seen. I'm totally by that there are times when if you're bashing your head against it, you're going to punch through to gold as it were, right? And Sometimes. I've seen that too. Yeah. But I think that it's, for me, um, it's just been easier if I if I let myself walk away and trusting like I'll go to sleep at night and I'll just say, okay, brain, go get it. Go get me the answer. And um, it takes a while to train yourself to do that, but you can. I mean, right now I'm in a phase of I'm writing a script and I'm like, I have, I, I had to stop yesterday. I was like, I don't know where to go right now. <laughs> so, and the other thing is um, if you hit a problem with just one more little tip, this is something that I've just developed is there will always be when I'm directing a show or I'm devising a piece of theater, there'll be a moment where I just hate it. It's horrible. It doesn't work. It looks like crap. The actors are unhappy. It doesn't tell the story. It's just like, oh my God, I hate this part. So we'll be rehearsing and I'll be like, oh, here comes this part. Oh God, I hate it. And I decided one day I was going to make that part my favorite part. Whatever I hate the most, I'm going to make my favorite part. And about 75% of the time, I can make it in the top three. Really? About, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was my goal. That was my total goal. I remember I was doing this show and there was a set change and I hated it because I don't like when the play stops. It's like, okay, we're just going to stop now. And you guys just sit there while we go and do this. Okay. And it just drives me nuts. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to make this part of the story. And I did, I made the set change part of the story. It ended up being my favorite part. And that's when I learned, okay, this works. I got to do this. I got to make my worst thing, my favorite thing. Um, and it's, it's a good challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I like that. Like, cause I was imagining that you just had to make yourself like set changes. And I didn't realize <laughs> that you were changing the idea of set changes completely. Exactly. And so yeah. that it would work for you or work in that situation that's super cool that's super cool yeah it's that that's a different way to think about things because 
because I was like trying to picture how to, there's a lot of things that as a creative person that I don't enjoy about various parts of the creative process that are, that are <laughs> more left brain. There are just parts that you have to do where you just have to barrel down and do this part of the work or that part of the work. And, you know, to, to, to make myself like it didn't seem to work, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, the, that's the tricky part. Cause there's not a, I mean, at first you're like, well, how exactly like what you just said, well, how the hell am I going to do this? Well, you're going to get creative about it. You're going to pull it upside down, turn it inside out. You're going to just look at it in as many different ways as you can. Um, and that sort of takes me to when you're, well, I guess it's not just when you're incubating, but anytime you want to actually be creative, you can put yourself in positions where your brain will naturally get there. You'll get into that a sort of a mini flow. And we've all felt it. Like I know if I go for a walk, after about 20 minutes, my brain starts to clear. And the problem that I've been dealing with, it's suddenly it's like, oh, oh yeah. And you just you're just in a different place and the ideas come and then I can't wait to get back home. Right. Or when you're driving, driving is really a fascinating thing. And I'm talking about highway driving mostly. Okay. Yeah. So you've got one part of your brain that's like, okay, there's that car back there. He's about 200 feet back and he's about doing my speed. And there's this guy over here and he's passing that guy there. And I want to get into this lane in about a half a mile. You know what I mean? And you that brain is like doing the whole thing. And the other part of your brain is doing something completely different. You're thinking about how you're going to talk to your grandma about that fight you had. You're thinking about how you're going to write that that line in that song. You're going to think you're thinking about how you're going to fit that, you know, this how you're going to use that scaffolding to get up to the third floor. You're thinking about creative things on the other side of your brain. Totally totally fine. Driving is one of the most perfect times. I always have a voice recorder in my car cuz that's when I come up with all my ideas is is when I'm driving on the highway and some people have that when they're in the shower some guys I've heard say yeah when I get I, I shave I get in the zone and I'm like well how many things are you shaving because it's gonna <laughs> take that long but you know like we all have these different they're theater things. people Barbara they're shaving a lot oh, yeah. <laughs> shave the chest and uh, yeah but um there's so these, these places that you can feel that those are the places to go and make sure you go there often you know, go and take a drive on a Sunday, take a long walk a couple times a week, get out in nature, do whatever feels, maybe it's swimming. I don't, whatever it is for you mm -hmm. and let your brain just play, just let your brain play. Cause we don't do that anymore. We're so busy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's yeah. That's part of it. Cause I really enjoy being busy. <laughs> There's two things that really <laughs> light me up. One is being productive and the other is being passionate and creative and I think that those two things kind of conflict with each other sometimes because you know it doesn't fit in creativity doesn't always fit into your schedule the way you want it to that's so true that's so completely true yeah absolutely um but there's a couple of things that you can do. And I know, again, if you go on the internet, there's probably going to be 37 ways of being creative. But uh, there's a couple of things, exercises that I used to use in class, one of them in particular. And it's if you've got a problem and you can't figure out what to do, it's the best way of when a, someone comes up with a crazy idea or you come up with a crazy idea, you, it stops you from rejecting that idea. And it immediately makes you actually look at it. And it's Edward de Bono came up with it. It's called a PMI. Pretty simple, plus minus interesting. So I used to get my class together and say, okay, in groups, you get new groups of eight or five or whatever the heck it is. So we're all going to do a plus minus and interesting. And it's just exactly like it sounds. It's like, here's the positive aspects. Here's the negative aspects. Here's the things that make you go, hmm, right? We're gonna, I'm going to give you a controversial nonsense scenario and we're, you're going to do that on it. You're not going to reject the idea. You're just going to go, okay, let's look at this, this, and this. And so I would say things like, um, what was one of his, his ones was like, oh, all cars now have to be yellow or like by law. So 
okay, that's hideous, but, <laughs> but let's look at the plus minus interesting. And they, I would make them do these exercises over and over again with all kinds of different crazy scenarios. And it, they came up with some brilliant stuff, like just okay, freaking brilliant. So can I play? <laughs> yes. Let's play, Absolutely. let's play plus minus interesting. <laughs> If all cars had to be yellow, I like that. Um, then for people to have different cars, they would have to design more interesting body shapes to cars. I would say that would be a plus, right? Like Or an interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to sell them or to make your car stand out, you definitely would have to start designing new designs um, of shapes since they're yeah. all yellow. Um which I think would be a plus, but it also could be a minus because if there are different shapes of cars, they may not be as good at functioning as a car. <laughs> uh, also, yellow is just a, a, not one of my favorite colors. No. no, there aren't a lot of yellow cars. That's a big minus. Um, yeah, I don't know. What else? Hmm. There's, they came, yeah. I thought that it would be interesting to see if people decorated the interiors of their cars then. Oh, so there would be a yeah. whole market in like all kinds of seat covers and decals and, you know. Look at you, Barbara, you're... thinking inside the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guilty. <laughs> That's hilarious, though. That's funny. But then you say <laughs> to yourself, well, what, the what box. color right <laughs> by thinking what color like would cabs be or ambulances or mm -hmm. police cars would there be different laws for those you know mm -hmm. would, would the tires be... have to be yellow oh that's a good one mm -hmm. that's, that's a good interesting one. that's an interesting so interesting could be like a question about like more details about it okay yeah would they I attract wasps you know i mean <laughs> right <laughs> like who knows so it just gets that part of your brain kind of turning the wheels turning <clears throat> that's right and it stops you from immediately going well that's ridiculous uh -huh. i mean you might have that initial thought like another one was all marriages have to be five-year renewable contracts that's a I big think. one right <laughs> that's a big one that people like i would start them off with a car and then we'd get more complex right to see where they would go um and 10 how many years was this ago now 10 or 15 years ago god that's scary there's different ideas about things too. So it's uh, I, over time, I can see how it would be a little different, that exercise, but. Yeah, I love it. So are there any other little tools that you can throw at, throw at? That me? was one of my favorite. The other thing was just, if you're, if you're writing at all, I used to constantly tell people not to edit themselves, which means I would say, turn off your screen. Now, back then we actually had separate screens or I will throw a tea towel over my laptop screen and just write and just write, 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 write. So that I'm not, what you're trying to do is just to not edit yourself. You're trying to just get the stuff out. Not even typos. You're doing, you're talking about stream of consciousness. It, it, essentially. Yeah. Essentially. Although, you know, you could, you could, you don't have to write in a stream of consciousness style. You just have to not edit because <laughs> yeah. I know for me I go back and I'm like oh I don't like that and then but the next moment I'm like what was I going to do again I've lost my idea or I'll stop myself and say this doesn't fit in here it must go in later and and then by the time I get to later I forgot what I was going to say a few minutes ago that would have fit perfectly later <laughs> exactly yeah exactly yeah that happens to me a lot too because I, I do edit myself I'm like okay wait don't say that yet and then uh, get get down the road and I'm like what was that cool thing that I was gonna oh, fudge it's gone <laughs> right it's, and it gets worse as you get older <laughs> uh. but you know people could do things like just you know what they could start writing haikus or something something that gives you some structure uh -huh. but allows you to play inside that structure tell a story in two sentences you know um, and or, or tell a story in three sentences, then two sentences, then get it down to one sentence and see if you can do it. Things that where you can just be, be allowed to play, but inside some sort of a structure are really, really good for you because they force you to make really, <laughs> it's my dog snoring, really creative um, even hear it. choices. Oh, I'm glad you can't hear him because it's loud. 
<laughs> but, so any of those kinds of things will, you know, will, will help. I particularly love the PMI. Yeah. Um, and I use it often, you know, because I like it too. I'll be yeah. using it from now on. <laughs> <laughs> from here on out and i hope you know a lot of the viewers will get something out of this as well um oh, i hope so and to enhance your well-being to get out of these ruts that depress us sometimes I, I, especially that last example of the five-year contract marriage you know like <laughs> renewable <laughs> they definitely make you more conscious of how you behave in your marriage so like man i'm loving that one <laughs> It's very interesting. Yeah, it's a very interesting idea. He came up with some really interesting, controversial topics to use. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But well, um, it's a it's a really important part of your well-being. And I think it increases your happiness a lot if you just allow yourself. And part of it's just give yourself some time each day to not have to be anywhere or do anything. You know, I I'm a, I remember when I was younger sitting in a sunbeam just contemplating my hair for like half an hour <laughs> right like just looking at the color and looking at the way it shone and your brain's off doing something else just find some time to indulge in letting your mind work freely on on something or, or on nothing specifically because I, I think that it's really important for our brains like for it really is important it's what we're supposed to be doing is free thinking, daydreaming, you know, that kind of stuff is really, really crucial. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and like, like with that plumber figuring out the heart thing, mm -hmm. you know, like maybe if those heart guys had like taken a minute to like stop and do a PMI. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. They might've come up with it sooner. Um, <clears throat> it's such a good example, Karen. That's like a really good example. Yeah. I just, I was just thinking about how all these people from these different fields and how it affects their own, them doing their own job that they're very proficient at, but we all get stuck sometimes. So this Absolutely. definitely can help anybody. I can Absolutely. See. Collaboration is amazing. You know, like, I, I think that's one of the reasons I love theater is because it's the most collaborative art form there is. You know, I can get people who design video, I can get people who do sound, who do lights, who paint, because there's scenic design, m music, acting, like just, it's, it's everything. That's one of the reasons I love it, because I love collaborating with people. So yeah, you're, I think you're right. Yeah. Well, I've loved collaborating with you on this right now. <laughs> well, thank you. Same. I, I was trying to pack in as much as I possibly could in this little time. So. <laughs> no, it's awesome. And it doesn't feel like packed. It feels very casual and relaxed and fun. Yeah. Um, you've been working on a book and I know it's not directly related to creativity, but the people that are watching might be interested. So do you want to talk about what that is and what you're doing with that and um so for any yes thank you for anybody who's um interested in theater i i am working on a whole bunch of stuff one is a uh, directing essentials for community theater because i i live in a place now where there's no professional i shouldn't say no there's not a lot of professional like i i came from a sort of very professional place like the, the city that I came from had a lot of professional theater, not so much here. So I started working with community groups. So that's just like anybody who wants to get up and try it. So I've got a book uh, called Directing Essentials for Community Theater Artists. Um, uh, right now I'm writing a play, which is called Ignorant. And um, I'll be I'm developing a, a UTeach site that's going to be the resource um, center, the go-to place for community theater people. So that'll be called Acting for Community Theater. I just started a new podcast. And then if you're interested in uh, other stuff, like freedom stuff, I just started a bit shoot channel called Free Humanity. So I'm sort of all over the place right now. And I'm making courses and writing plays and writing books and doing all kinds of stuff. Creative people have to be doing a lot of different things. <laughs> it's like... I don't know why. You're right. <laughs> I know the feeling, but I think that, you know, it just, uh, 
jogged my mind that a bunch of home homeschool moms might be interested in learning directing for community theater just because it's something that we like to get our kids involved in and maybe mm. there's not as many professionals in that where we are yeah kids is a whole other thing um, <laughs> it really is and I, I don't work a lot with children but um but it's it's a whole other thing and there are definitely people out there who specialize in that yeah yeah it's a great thing for kids it's fantastic for them yeah and for moms too yeah and learning and the kids learning directing as well you know is probably oh wow. yeah that they might it's be a big interested. job <laughs> big, big job but and some kids like that kind of thing you know um they do. yeah yeah they I mean do. I mean I'm not thinking of like my eight-year-old but I'm thinking more maybe <laughs> along the lines of like a teenager you know? right yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah start yeah. small if you're if you got a teenager out there start with scenes start small with little scenes yeah once you get the bug you, it's there for life <laughs> That's great. Well, I know you'll have some links for me and we'll have those in the show notes under this and in the sub stack. And so everybody can join us and whatnot and find you and find resources through all the different things that you're doing creatively all over the place. <laughs> and um, I hope this has been helpful for anybody else that's watching it it sure has been helpful for me I know I'm gonna be a lot less stuck in the future having learned so much today in just one hour so I appreciate that Barbara so much thank it's you for so being. much fun thank you yeah thank you so everyone thank you for watching and thank you for enjoying Wellbeing Wednesday and if you feel like you loved it share it with your friends and share it with other people that feel stuck or stymied and see if this show will jog some new creativity. Mm -hmm. Have a nice day. <laughs>